Hello everyone, I'm Pauline Thornhill, and this is Herdy, one of the Newfoundland dogs you'll come to know in tonight's show. He's one of the gentle giants, one of the huge breed that's not just synonymous with Newfoundland, but with loyalty, sensitivity, and unconditional love. <laughs> tonight, we'll meet the dogs known for their big, soft hearts, and some of the people who can't imagine life without them. What a good guys you are. What good guys. Jackie Petrie has a saying, Newfoundland dogs are not her whole life, but they've made her life whole. She's bred Newfoundland dogs, raising purebred puppies for sale. She's entered her dogs in countless dog shows. For almost 30 years, Newfoundland dogs have been a part of her life. They're Jackie's children, her family of Newfs. Right now, she and her husband live with four under their roof. They're not a watchdog, but they watch over you. And they watch what happens. And they know your moods, they know your... But in order for them to do that, they have to be with you. They, and that's, I think, the, the whole thing is that they have so much to give that they're allowed to do it. Hardy is the latest addition to the Petrie pack. He's just over two years old now, the puppy of the household. He's a Navy boy. He was a puppy when Jackie first got him. This home video was Jackie's first glimpse of Hardy. His breeder sent it all the way from Seattle. There were eight pups to choose from in Hardy's litter, but Jackie instantly knew he was the one she wanted. It was something about the way he ran toward the camera, she says. And that something is still there today. People who know him well, or have known him since he was a puppy, have nicknamed him Air Hardy because he's most typically airborne. He's growing up some and getting a little calmer, but he is very bright, very manipulative, very entertaining, very active dog. Not all news are as active as he is, but he's just, he just seems to be constantly curious. Very handsome, too. Oh, yes, well, I think he's dropped dead gorgeous, but they all are. There's no such thing as an ugly new. Jackie's infatuation with this breed goes back to her childhood in Grand Falls when a Newfoundland dog followed her home from school one day. I don't know, uh, so big and so kind and just sort of stuck to you. It's a Velcro kind of breed, you know. Just, but you were just a little girl. Yeah, and I already had a dog. I had a Cocker, English Cocker. But he was, it was just something and you look into the eyes, it's, you know, like you fall in and drown. <coughs> Newfoundland dogs have not only filled Jackie's life, they filled up her house, too. Um, it can hamper our mobility, I guess, at times. Um, they take up a lot of space, yes. And I mean, moving around the kitchen sometimes, especially mealtime, when they're all hoping you're going to trip and drop the roast kind of thing, you know, that then you have to watch where you put your feet. The oldest in the family is Grip. He's 11 now and retired. But when he was in his prime, he was Jackie's champion show dog. Then there's Grip's daughter, Rose. She's the only female in the pack. Homer's the biggest boy, 143 pounds of gentle giant. Throw Hardy in the mix, and that makes for a lot of dog, more than you can fit in one washroom. What do you people do when you have to use the bathroom in this house? <laughs> you ask Grip very politely to move, and hope he does it quickly. He's always favored the bathroom as a place to catch a nap, and so did his mother. Interestingly enough, so maybe maybe a, a, the sleeping in the bathroom is genetic. I don't know. If it is, it missed a generation in Rose. She'll settle for the couch, but her preference is Jackie's bed. 
In either case, it's usually Jackie's husband, Bob, that gets squeezed. Well, one of the great advantages uh, of living with these dogs, uh, especially when you're in a marriage, is the fact that I can never be blamed totally for the snoring. But uh, it doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind them where they, where they sleep, as long as they don't smother me. It gets to be a bit of a game. Sometimes she'll wait until it's dark and quiet, and you can hear her come in, and she sneaks up on the bed. And, like you're not going to notice 140 pounds of dogs <laughs> dropping in for a nap, you know. But I, I really think that she thinks that, oh, they're asleep, they won't notice I'm here. <laughs> Four Newfoundland dogs all under the same roof. Four Newfoundland dogs and one cat. I wish I could interview your cat. <laughs> if I could ask your cat, what's it like living with four Newfoundland dogs? What do you think she'd say? Ooh. What would she say? I think that when she came here, she thought that she had amusement for the rest of her natural life. She teases them. She torments them. If she lies down, with Grip especially, and Homer as well, they'll wash her. The unfortunate thing is that they don't wash her with the lie of her hair, so they sort of lick against the grain, so it sort of stands up like a, sort of a bad punk hairdo with too much gel. Jackie and Bob got their first Newfoundland dog in 1972. There was no question that she would be a house dog, as were all the others that came after. A lot of people's view of Newfoundland dogs is that, well, they're big and smelly and they're filthy. And that's because if you went around for six months without combing your hair or washing it or taking a bath, you'd probably be the same, but you might end up in jail. Um, but that's the thing is they, they require a, a grooming and attention and, uh, and then you can live with them. Yeah, it's working. You have to accept the fact that there's, you know, dogs' hairs cascading across the floor on occasion. But that's why they made a Hoover. You know, it's sort of clear it up. And it's, oh, I think it's a small price for what they give. Yeah. Do you ever get jealous of the dogs? Only when it comes to feeding time. Actually, it's, we both cook, but usually, um, uh, the priority is at meal times is feed the dogs first. The bottom line is, is if you feed them first to get them off your plate. Where are you going, Homer? Ho, ho, ho. Is dinner late this morning? Well, if you want good food, you gotta wait. Turkey necks, boiled with lots of garlic and a little salt, mixed vegetables and rice, it's enough to make Homer's mouth water. Jackie's husband works in the film industry and is often away, so most of this work yeah. falls to her. Well, that's what dinner's gonna be, so if you wanna go wait somewhere till I finish this. The dogs have become Jackie's full-time job. Even meals are labor-intensive, the way she prepares them. Can to the bones, my bear. Dry dog food, I take it, is not good enough? Well, it's a personal thing. A lot of people feed only dry dog food. <clears throat> I like to feed a good quality dry dog food. And add some extras and just make it a little more enticing. I don't know. Maybe I do it as much for me as for them, but it's just it's a, a flavor enhancer, you know. It's like the gravy on your dinner. It just makes it a little bit more appealing to you. Here we go. That's a good girl. Two meals a day times four Newfoundland dogs. Sounds like the makings of an expensive grocery bill. Do you have any idea how much you spend on dog food a month? Mm, no. <laughs> I don't really want to add it up. <laughs> um, I, don't, I really don't know. I really haven't added it up in, in and years and years. And you probably don't care either, do you? Well, you know, there's worse things to spend your money on, I think. And it's not just dog food. The dogs themselves aren't cheap. You can pay over $1,000 for a quality purebred Newf. 
Then there's the years of vet bills Jackie's had to face. And on top of that, she's invested a fortune in her Newfoundland dog collection. She's got enough Newfoundland dog stuff to fill an archive. What are you going to do with all this? I don't know. Um, that's sort of a $64,000 question. I would love, I think that it would be very appropriate in this province that the Newfoundland Museum have a Newfoundland dog room. I would say that most people here do not know that they have been the companions of many, many famous people, Queen Victoria, um, that Napoleon was saved from drowning by a Newfoundland dog. I mean, Newfoundland dog changed the course of history. So all of those things I think that should be available. I think it's very sad in this province that I can go places with the dogs, with any of them, and have children and say, what kind of dog is it? Come on, hearty man. In this province, there is probably no one who values the Newfoundland dog more than Jackie Petrie. Come on, Hardy. Rose, where are you? She's been moved by the breed's sheer brawn, its power and presence, and time and time again has been touched by the dog's gentle, lumbering charm. She's grieved when she's had to put a dog down, and to this day can't talk about losing some of them. Like Calypso, the last dog she ever bred. Jackie lost her and her puppies on a veterinarian's operating table during delivery. Can you tell me about that? No. <laughs> we lost the bitch and her puppies, and uh, I can't. It's, it's one of the one of the things that uh, can't talk about. Was it because of the puppies? Is that what made it more profound? Oh, no, because. Losing puppies is always upsetting, but you don't know them. Mm. Until they arrive, you don't know them. They're just embryos, and, in a sense. Um, but it's losing your dog. Jackie could never bring herself to breed another dog again, but she's always gotten more, not to replace the one she's lost, but to love, to show, just to be with. I think they're just absolutely phenomenal dogs. They're so special, very caring, and very comforting dogs. They add so much, I cannot imagine life without at least one of them. You know, and like many things, they're better in pairs, you know, at least. <laughs> Two pairs or three pairs. <laughs> Very nice with Hardy. Don't let him get too close to Buster. It's rather large looming on him. Remember, the object of the exercise is for the dog to stand steady while a stranger approaches. And Hardy about turn. Hardy heel. Come on. Jackie is no stranger to dog shows, but Hardy is. He's just starting his career as a show dog. And surprise, surprise, he's the biggest boy in the class. Oh, Hardy, wake up. The more the dog does it right, the better it is for you and the dog. Come on, good boy, come on. If they sit a little bit crooked with a little dog, you can just sort of slide them over and then praise them. You can place them. With these dogs, you have to get up and take a few steps and do it again. So it's more work for the handler than it is with a smaller dog. Yeah, there's no sliding him over with a pat of the hand, huh? No, no, no. Hardy, come. Come on, good go, boy. Go, 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 go back, yes. go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay. Good boy. There's no good living boy. with something this big if it won't listen to you. So whether you plan yeah. to show your Newfoundland oh, dog or not, forever. Jackie says basic yeah. obedience is a must. And so was this. He loves it. 
Does he really? Oh yeah, he'll get in the tub, it's no problem. Sometimes the problem is that I'm trying to bath somebody else and he tries to get in the tub at the same time. Lean back. They are really high maintenance, though, weren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> to keep them to keep them looking good. And how often do you have to go through this, Jackie? I try and do them out once a month. Six weeks sometimes, it depends. Spring is the worst time when they're blowing coat. I'll just hide behind you. I have to think. I've never known you to shake so much, Hardy. Hardy is one of the lucky Newfoundland dogs. He ended up with Jackie Petrie. Yeah, we'll do the other side in a minute. Just hang on. Sadly, now. not everyone's willing to put the work into regular grooming. Not everyone's willing to let a full-grown Newf live indoors. Even in this province, where one would think the Newfoundland dog would be all but revered, the gentle giants can sometimes lead a lonely, neglected life. They've ended up here, at the SPCA shelter in St. John's, along with all the other adult dogs nobody wants. Debbie Powers runs the shelter. She remembers the first time she was called in to rescue a purebred Newfoundland dog. I remember picking up this beautiful animal, but you couldn't tell if it was male or female. There was no way of telling what it was, except it was a big black blob. That's how bad the matting was. The dog's name was Sadie. When Debbie got to her, she was tied to a tree in a backyard. She was just lying, actually, in a hole that she had dug for herself with absolutely no shelter provided. So that, that was the beginning for her. So somewhere in her life, she had had a lot better. And I guess she had been resold or sold. And thank God, Jackie Petrie ended up with her. And she ended up in a beautiful new home. Jackie has been a foster mom to dogs like this. She took Sadie home with her, combed her out, cleaned her up, and eventually found her a new home. She's never turned a Newfoundland dog away, no matter what its condition. Well, I can only go back to Sadie's case because I really have to tell you that Sadie's was the worst, and I remember walking into the vet clinic with that dog, and I mean, the horror on everybody's faces, as mine would have been had I not known what I was doing. And the stench from the animal, I mean, it was gross. There's no other word to put it, but plain gross. And uh, she didn't give up on that dog. There have been other Newfoundland dog rescues since Sadie. This one is the latest, Casey, a nine-year-old female. The owners are moving and can't take her with them, so they've turned her over to the shelter. There he is, Jackie, who she is. Hi, sweetums. Hi. She's in pretty good shape, unwanted, but not abused. A little thin, Jackie thinks, and in need of a bath, but otherwise all right. She'll go home with Jackie, the newest addition to her pack of purebreds. I just find it very sad that any dogs, not just the Newfoundland, really come to this. To, it's, you know, some, one time somebody bought a puppy and had great hope and promise, and she ends up at the age of nine in, in the shelter, you know, it's, it's tough. And you, and you can't always blame the people, at least, you know, she's not just abandoned somewhere. She was brought here because the people knew that, you know, she had a place to go from here, so. Casey, can you come home with me? Do you want to come home with me? If Jackie can find a home for Casey, she will. If not, she'll keep her. The aging female will live out her last years in Jackie's care, in dignity. Casey? We dropped in on Jackie several times over this past summer. We found Casey settled in and thriving. And on one visit, we found something else. Six brand new puppies, just two months old. The pups and their parents had been seized by the SPCA, and of course, mom and the family ended up here. The latest additions to Jackie's ever-present pack of noofs, the dogs who've made her life whole.